All right, hello everybody. Um, you're joining us in a demo game of On the Plane of Magma, uh, which is a scenario that Skirmisher Publishing has released uh, for a couple of systems now, but the system that we're going to be playing it for is our very new uh, travel-sized role-playing game, or TSRPG. Uh, it's a, a short scenario that's meant to be played through in one setting, or one sitting rather. And if TSRPG is new to you, uh, which wouldn't be surprising because it's new to everybody right now, um, it is a very rules light game uh, that I wrote while stuck in an airport on vacation uh, one year uh, back in the before times when travel was a lot more common. And we didn't have any of our role-playing stuff uh but i was there with a group of my friends we were looking to pass the time uh to to get through this delay and uh being a a, a game designer uh, my brain did game designing things um so it's really simple uh your your characters only have two stats which you'll see uh very shortly during during the game uh, you've got a mental stat you've got a physical stat um you don't need uh, any any randomizers? Everything's done just by guessing a name a number between one and another number. So uh, the storyteller just gives a range, lets the players know what that range is. Then they try to guess what that number is, plus or minus their stat. So gives you a kind of like effect similar to other role playing games where you have a modifier that gets you the, the bigger your modifier, the more likely you are to succeed. Um, Players can work together uh, to stack uh, bonuses with each other uh, in order to increase their odds. Um, failing challenges, there's no hit points or anything like that. If you fail the challenges in the game, uh, you can get knocked out of the scene, at least temporarily, because you've been kind of incapacitated. Or um, you can be knocked out of the scene, or knocked out of the session uh, entirely because your character's been killed uh, if there's been enough failures or if the failure is grievous enough. Um, your party is going to succeed or fail kind of as a group. Um, so if you are helping each other, then uh, if you all work together to accomplish some objective by trying to overcome a challenge but fail, you all fail together. So everybody's going to suffer the consequences of that. And what that looks like is base is going to change depending on your narrative. Uh, but when you succeed, you're all going to succeed together. Um, it's a game that's designed uh, to kind of disappear uh, into the background as much as possible. It's flexible. We're going to be playing uh, with an optional rule because the system this small kind of lends itself to optional rules. Uh, critical successes um, will make extra big good things happen uh, in the narrative and critical successes are whenever you manage to guess the random number exactly without needing any modifiers. So um, this is a little uh, description of the scenario um, so that uh, we can just set the tone a little bit and then everybody is going to introduce their characters um, and tell us their mental stat, their physical stat, their name, and the piece of equipment that they're gonna be taking with them. Uh, the piece of equipment I think I maybe forgot uh, to mention is uh, an item that your character brings with them uh, in the game and um, it's going to give you a bonus on your range, your your stat, as long as it's relevant to the particular challenge. And that's kind of up to everybody who's, who's playing the game. So um, this is... This is on the plane of magma. And so sometimes you don't end up where you expected to when you're on the road. I certainly didn't when I've designed this game. Uh, this mini scenario is intended to represent a spot on the quasi-elemental plane of magma that a party of adventurers have in the course of their travels been accidentally and unexpectedly transported to for some reason. On the plane of magma is intended to be played through in one session with the goal of returning to the material plane. And we also have four sample characters, and those are the four sample characters that we're going to be using tonight. So, Penny, why don't we start with you? Who are you going to be playing? What are your stats, and what's your equipment? Uh, I'm playing Myrmex, who is a Myrmidon soldier. Uh, Myrmidon 
they are they are sturdy people created by Zeus from ants to repopulate a land devastated by plague. Uh, Mermex Mur Mur was born and trained in a hive near Sparta. Uh, Mermex has a physical of four and a mental of one, so he's uh, Mermex is out there just to punch things, uh, hit things, uh, and uh, I can choose between a heavy crossbow or a longsword, and I'm going to pick longsword. Very cool. Thank you, Penny. Uh, and Mike, uh, who are you playing? I am playing Angelia, and Angelia is uh, an Olympian priestess, and Olympians in our world are people who are descended from the Olympian gods. So somewhere in her bloodline, uh, there is an Olympian god. And she's from a religious community on the slopes of Mount Olympus, uh, where she received instruction as an acolyte and as a temple musician. Uh, so her physical stat is two, her mental stat is three, uh, and I can choose for her equipment between a liar or three daggers. And I'm going to choose the liar uh, because I think that's probably more in keeping, at least with the way that I envision playing. All right, excellent. Amanda, who are you playing? I'm playing Lyco, the Sinocephalian sorcerer. So he's a sorcerer and he's a Sinocephalian, which means he has a doggy head. Uh, specifically, he has a head that looks kind of like a German shepherd's. Uh, and his physical is only one, and his mental is four. So my choice of equipment was either two daggers or an arcane focus, which is the long bone of an ancestor. Uh, I think I'm going to actually go with the two daggers because he can use all the help he could get physically. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, and last but not least, Paul, who are you playing tonight? So I'm playing Terrace. Uh, Terrace is a uh, human rogue and soldier. Uh, he's a bit cynical. Uh, you know, being surrounded by all these other much cooler species and just being a mundane human. Um, so he, he's kind of out for himself, uh, himself, the party, and everybody else kind mm -hmm. of in that order. He grew up on the seas. His father was a, uh, a captain of a trading vessel. Uh, he wound up uh, running with an Athenian street gang before he uh, met, met up with this group here. Uh, Terrace has a physical of three, a mental of two, and he's going to go with a combat net, kind of like those uh, nets that the gladiators use. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, everybody, uh, you should see uh, a map uh, in front of you. So feel free to peruse this as I set the scene a little bit for you. Searing heat, fiery brightness, and the stench of burning rock are the first things you notice when the vortex stops spinning and you find yourself deposited within a summoning circle in what is clearly an utterly alien and hostile environment. This circle is lo located at the center of a small granite island that has a half dozen hexagonal black basalt pillars, each between 20 and 30 feet in height around its ledge. A sea of molten lava surrounds this island and stretches away to the horizon in every direction, its surface covered with patches of dark cooling rock that are continuously broken by the hotter yellow, orange, and red magma below it. Above you, the sky is a sheet of flame with black clouds hanging in it, and in the distance, ash is raining down from some of them. You can only readily see a handful of features within this fiery landscape, including a zigzag granite causeway that begins at your location and abruptly ends a short distance from a strange five-sided stone column. This pentagonal pillar is rotating slowly, and a number of objects, each about the size of a person, are cluttered on top of it. Uh, beyond the rotating pentagon or pillar is another length of raised causeway and at the end of it a strange black castle that is a cluster of massive basalt towers keeps and minarets some of which loom as much as a hundred feet above the surface of the molten area so that's your situation folks uh well you then. have been uh deposited here through uh magical means and uh it's hot um it's 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 sweltering um and uh, 
the bead, uh, beads of sweat, uh, if you are in fact, well, I think you're all characters that would be able to sweat. Um, uh, they, they start to pop up almost immediately. Yes, Angelia. All right. Uh, Angelia is very compassionate. If you're hot, they're hot. She is going to reach into a rucksack, uh, get out her mess kit, uh, put some water in it from her water skin, and carry it over and put it down in front of the cyanocephalia. You know, I have hands. I can. You don't need to put it on the ground. I can. She's I can having drink trouble it. getting past the dog head. Yeah, I. I'm. Thanks. At least you can he's just not hand it to me next side of a car. But it's true. <laughs> I've got my sword pulled out and I'm looking around. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything? Uh, so let's see. You you start to uh, take a look around and you see uh, on this this little island, if you will, um, that you're surrounded by scorched and desiccated bones. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Scorched and desiccated bones of, of mixed varieties. Some of them humanish, some of them obviously not humanish. The 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 fiery landscape doesn't seem to discriminate. These these uh, bones are all like scattered in the summoning circle with us. Uh, they're not in the summoning circle. Rather, they're around the the kind of walkway that's sort of surrounding it. Okay, got it. are the bones just old skeletons, or do they look like they've been gnawed on and hacked at and somehow uh, defiled? Yeah, sure. That that's a that's a good question. Um, if you inspect them closely, um, I tell you what. I, I why why don't we make that our very first challenge of of the evening? Ooh, All right, challenge time. Challenge time. We're going to call this a cha a, a a ten, um, a fifty a ten point challenge. So that would mean that it is a number between one and ten. Uh, that you're going to need to use your mental stat for. So why don't you go ahead and guess the number? So I'll go with a seven. Yeah, okay, what's your mental? Plus two. Okay, two. all right, plus or minus two. Uh, and the number happens to be eight. So you are successful, you inspect those bones, and yeah, I mean, you've been around skeletons for one reason or another and uh, have learned to differentiate the reasons why they become skeletons in the first place are these not on uh, no uh not really um they're some of them have been broken the bones uh so mm -hmm. so subjected to some form of violence but by and large uh they are skeletons because uh, everything that was on them has been cooked off. Okay, I'm gonna step out of this circle. I don't want to be on here. I'm yeah, gonna okay. step on onto this walkway. I don't want to be on this circle anymore. I okay. don't like it here. Oh well, with your new vantage point, you can see that you are about ten feet above the lava. It's hot. I bet. Yeah. You get the little squiggly heat lines coming up. I'm also going to step outside the circle. Okay. Um, there's bones here. I'm looking to see, are there also bones on the causeway and on that, uh, on the little rotating pillar thing? Yes. Be, well, there are. No, no to the rotating pillar thing. Yes to the causeway. Um, as long as I'm still in the circle. Sure. Um, I don't think I want to stay in this place. And okay. obviously I was summoned into a summoning circle. Uh, I do have some background as a spellcaster, though not as a wizard. I'm, I'm uh, playing a priestess here. Sure. Um, but I'm going to examine the circle and see if there's some... If I can glean some way that it could be used to send us back to where we came from. Because obviously we're not meant to be here. Yeah, okay. Smart. You start to investigate this summoning circle. And... Excuse me. It's like set 
into the stone and you notice that you know most of it most of it is like carved into stone but at the various points in the the geometric shapes that form the circle at the various mm -hmm. points there are some uh brass discs so why don't you go ahead and make a 15 point mental or tackle 15 point mental challenge for me a 15 point mental challenge well, i have a mental of three yeah so i've got a pretty good chance of doing this but you know what i am going to ask the smartest person in the room uh, or the smartest person in the summoning circle. And I know that is the Sinocephalian, uh, contrary to appearances. Uh, so I say, uh, Lyco, you're a sorcerer and know about these things. And I engage Lyco in a discussion about the characteristics of the circle to see if we uh, can yes. determine uh, what is going on. Uh, so I'd like Lyco to assist me in figuring this out. So you're Absolutely. looking for Lyco's assistance. That's right. Yes. Okay. Lyco is more than happy to assist. Uh, I begin examining the circle as well. Okay, so you will get a plus one to your mental stat uh, for having Lyco's assistance. Okay, so I'm going to guess a 12. Okay. So I have plus three for my mental, and I have plus one for Lyco's, so I have a range of four. So I guess any if the number is between an eight and a 16. Eight and a 16 would be successful. Uh, you scratch your head over this one and other than what you've been able to surmise about it that it is a summoning circle which is a safe bet you're pretty certain of that in fact i'll give it to you i'll tell you it's a summoning circle right beyond that you aren't really able to ascertain anything beyond it's the number was four <laughs> okay. right. right, 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 right. No, uh, I, I, I uh, figured it was uh, that I was off on that. Okay, got it. Yeah. So I can't glean anything more. Yeah. So yeah. as Here's far as you can sorry. guess, in seven, you would have succeeded. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let, me, let me ask uh, something uh, as far as this game goes. Uh, so Lyco assisted me. Mm -hmm. So presumably that means now Lyco couldn't attempt to do the same thing. That's right. Uh, himself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Lyco, because he assisted, is suffering the same consequences of failure. The two of you know. have frustrated yourselves over this particular problem and you're at that point in the the research slash problem solving process where you're not seeing any ways out of it um, got it it's something that happens to all of us and so the two of you are, are not going to be able to figure out more about this unless some drastic thing changes the conditions got it so maybe uh while that's happening sure um we could look around through the bones, kind of just kick around, search through them, see if there are any clues out here that survive the heat. Uh, you know, stone tablets, writings, arcane devices, anything like that. Well, just how anything far unusual. Do you adventure? Uh, just all the way around the circle, from you know, or around the perimeter. So from the edge of the summoning circle out to the edge of the stone circle, and sure. a three hundred and sixty all the way around the map. Yeah, okay. Everybody can... Who, who's participating in this? Well, I, I was sort of... I think he's doing this while I was trying to figure oh, out okay. what was going Sounds on. Sounds good. All right. In that case... I'll help. I'll, I'll help with it. You'll help? Cool. Why don't you both... And you can tell me who's who's doing the primary guessing here because that's the mental stat that we're going to use. Be because my mental's only one. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. So you're assisting. You're gonna you're gonna grant a plus one to Terrace. Terrace, why don't you attempt a fifteen point mental challenge for me here? Okay. Uh, well, I think I'll go with a six, which would go from what uh, three. So from a three to a nine. So I'm guessing a six. You're guessing six. The number was seven. So you are successful again. Nice. You're. I would say you're on a roll, but you're not because. <laughs> We don't roll and everybody gets it. Okay. You don't find anything new of note on 
your platform or in the summoning circle. But as you scan the lava fields beyond, you see something large and kind of serpentine along with some smaller serpentine things sort of chilling in the lava kind of on top of some of the cooler parts of the lava that are like solidified on top um and they're just a few hundred yards away well that can't be good <laughs> so <laughs> let's tell everyone else <laughs> hey look hmm? something's moving out there there are some creatures here i'm sure they're friendly La lava creatures ostensibly Mermex, the professional soldier who's been dumped into an alien environment is sure that uh the serpentine lava creatures are friendly maybe, maybe Mermex is telling a joke oh that yes. weird Mermex be this that weird aunt, aunt jokes ironic. yeah <laughs> Nobody gets the sense of humor. It's because he has no facial expression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a helmet for a face. Yeah. Myrmidon humor. It's very, it's very esoteric. Yeah, I right. wouldn't get it. Spartan improv. See, if you were all also Myrmidons, you would get that he was using humor pheromones, and so you exactly. would laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten it. I'll never get my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> As an aside, so when you're saying it's a 15-point challenge, it doesn't uh, that it, the challenge number can be a two, and that doesn't mean it wasn't much of a challenge. It just means that it's harder to guess because it's a bigger pool of numbers. That's so, right. Okay. Yeah. So a two-point challenge means you've got a one or a two. It's binary. So okay, yeah. that was the thing that I had not been clear on. So. Mm hmm Good. Good. Um. I propose we move on. Okay. Uh, I, I think we've exhausted whatever possibilities uh, for learning anything uh, we have within the summoning circle or within this uh, um, uh, ring of uh, hexagonal basalt columns. And we should probably move along the causeway toward uh, that rotating pillar, which is, uh, according to our map, halfway between us and the castle. Sounds good to me, all yeah. while mm -hmm. keeping an eye on these uh, serpentine completely non-threatening uh, magma types. Right. Right. Very weird. Yeah, one of them winks at you. Ah. Uh, ah. No thank you. Uh -huh. Never good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I will head first. Just that way, if something pops out, I can hit it. Okay. I'll bring up the rear. Heading down the causeway. Cautiously. Cautiously heading down the causeway. Uh, yeah, your tokens are a little bit bigger than they probably should be, uh, just for the, the sake of being uh, legible to, to people viewing. Um, right. But also, but like, your characters fit perfectly fine on these ledges. They're not like super duper narrow. We're not. Think, we're not I actually think... walking a tightrope as exactly. we do this. Yeah, I think that causeway is actually supposed to be ten feet wide. So technically, we could have two characters side by in, side e yeah. in each square. So exactly. you could, could be so sharing we... a square with someone if you want. So so wait, TSRPG isn't a highly simulationist, super technical, <laughs> precisely accurate game when it comes to combat? So, Technically, we could be doing it without the map. So then we should be able to jump easily to this rotating thing. This rotating Do you want to oh. jump to this rotating thing? After um, you. <laughs> you should go for it. Do you want to do it? How, how, big a, how big a gap is it? It is a... Hold on, I know this. I think the gap would change the width. Oh, of... as it rotates, the gap definitely change. Yeah, because mm. look at the si the the configuration the of, the, of yeah. the Pentagon. If yep. the tip is pointing towards you, it's going to be closer. If one of the faces is pointing towards you, it's going to be further. So the 
distance is going to be changing continuously as mm -hmm. that little pentagonal island rotates. This what are the true. pointy things on the corners? Ah, you asked the, the, the question. Mm, good the question. question. Okay, so from from here you can make, because they're kind of big, um, you, you make them out as a collection of what, you know, you're, you're all living in ancient Mediterranean. You recognize these shapes. These are what people would call the Plutonic solids. And they are a sh series of shapes that gamers all know and hold dear. Why? Mm. Because they are the Please. shapes used on polyhedrals. Pol your your polyhedron yep. role playing dice. So you have, uh, what do you have? You have sorry. <laughs> um, you have a four sided, a six sided, an eight sided, a twelve sided, and a twenty sided uh, polyhedron each on this rotating platform. For bonus points, why is there no 10-sided one on there? Because a decahedron isn't really a platonic solid. That's right, it's not. The 10-sided <laughs> die is, is, is blasphemy. It's amazing what you learn in Athenian street gangs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Because because you're you're standing there menacing people while Socrates is going on and on like <laughs> what? Yeah, step up. Socrates, yeah, shook him down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Paul presumably has some unspoken uh, bonus that he can claim from you at some point. Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> In fact, I will. I will give you a, a a plus one at a moment of my choosing that is relevant to the information that you know. Okay. Excellent. So there, there's no, ob what, I, what I'm feeling though is that there's no obvious safe way to get onto this rotating uh, uh, island. Uh, to be meta for a second with you, there is a way to do it. You can jump and that would be a 15 point physical challenge. Is is the island at the same height as the path yes. on? Yeah, okay. So they're all 10 feet above the surface of the mag. That's right. How hard would it be if I were to pick people up and throw them? Harder than a 15 Harder. point okay. physical challenge. Okay. That only <laughs> works with dwarves. <laughs> no I dwarves in this the party. area to see if uh, I notice anything other than the island, which is 10 or 15 feet away and the rotating or and and you know the plutonic solids yeah uh, appropriately your myrmidon was was focused on getting over to the platform using physical means which he's good at uh, you look does. at the myrmidon's feet and the what stands out to you are some uh symbols that are etched into the stone three of them they're about six we, inches wide each we right on the edge of the uh right on the edge of the standing yeah i, I asked you to step them. back yeah okay i will step back uh go ahead and move your tokens i don't want to be responsible for placing you in a place if uh something bad happens <laughs> all right what are these symbols well they're very fancy how many symbols? Three. Three symbols. Three. You see a triangle, a square, and a pentagon. A three-sided triangle, four-sided square, and a five-sided pentagon. Yes. Beside each other. Correct. Carved into the stone. That's right. Down where the Myrmidon was standing uh, yes. uh, a minute ago. Okay. <laughs> and was the Mermaid on standing on these? So well, like, he moved, in contact so he with them? Yeah. But he but he, he, but, he but he was standing on them. He had been in standing in contact. On them. Yeah, okay, okay. Hmm. But I my sense is that they're real obvious. They're not like a trap trigger. They weren't hidden. No, no, no. They're pretty obvious. They're 
and, and deliberately done there to be sort of part of the, the scenery rather than something that was obviously like meant to be obscured or put there as graffiti or something like that. So mm. deliberate, they're deliberately part of the decor. Correct. And they, in a sense, they kind of complement the plutonic solids themselves. They sure do. All right. So any ideas? So three, four, five, right? Uh -huh. so three sides, three four sides, five sides. Three-sided shapes. Shape, a four-sided shape, and a five-sided shape etched into the stone right on the edge of the causeway, facing the rotating island that has the five plutonic solids uh, rising up out of it. Yeah. They do anything when the matching symbol comes around? I mean, Mer Mermax wouldn't necessarily think of that because Mer well, Mermax Penny can think of that just fine. Uh, Penny thinks of it, the Mermax thinks yeah, of it. Yeah, exactly. What would qualify as the matching symbol, Penny? Well, the uh, the triangle uh, when the uh, 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 when the four sided shape comes around. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't do anything, no. But Mer Mermax is is correct he remembers his his uh, geometry class those, this those... is a diceless game but i'm going to get out my four-sided die yeah 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 everybody go ahead and have my, my six-sided side in front of you You're like hold on let me look at these shapes yeah that's my right. shapes i see it on the map here maybe like yeah. push push something like my touch the symbols die. oh the eight-sided die has triangular faces too penny so four mm -hmm. has uh triangular faces the six has square faces the eight has triangular faces uh what was the other one a 12 12 and a 20. 12 has pentagonal faces and oh and a 20 once again has a triangular face i think i would have just known that offhand but <laughs> there we go so uh, so so triangle square pentagon uh no triangle square uh triangle Pentagon triangle again. So Terrace, you asked if they did anything if they were touched. Do you touch them? Uh, well, I, I don't know if I'm smart enough to do that. There may be more intelligent uh, members of the party do that it, would not, prefer do to it do that. Do it in that order. Do it in that oh, order. Yeah. Order okay. So I'm a rogue. Sure. I'm the rogue. Uh, I'm. I'm probably used to getting zapped by traps and things. So. <laughs> like that. Sure. As as these uh, platonic solids rotate around and are closest to me in order, I'll I'll touch the corresponding symbol that corresponds with the face on the die. Okay, which or order? Face is on that? the. Okay. Um, is it rotating clockwise or counterclockwise? It is rotating. You listed them in order, so presumably it's it is rotating true. from smallest to largest. The, the four or the uh, uh, die four comes up, then the die six comes around, then the die eight comes around. Yeah, it's kind of okay. so, And then the die twenty. Yes, it's kind of close. Okay, so I'll push the triangle. Then when the cube comes, I'll push the square. All right. And when the octahedron comes, I'll push another triangle. Then when the isohedron comes, I'll push the. I, I googled this. I'm not that. I don't remember <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> when the pentagon comes, or when that comes, I'll hit the pentagon. And when the dodecahedron, which I do know because I've been playing D and D for forty years, um, I'll push the uh, triangle. Again. All so right. So triangle, square, triangle, pentagon, triangle, and I'm ready to challenge whatever awful thing happens to you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you do that and uh, something somewhere chimes and the rotating platform ceases its rotation and out from the magma rise basalt pillars oh. that uh, form a path that continues from your causeway through uh, onto this pillar and then onto the causeway beyond it. 
Nice. So two pillars came up from the magma and basically bridged our causeway to the island and the island to the next segment of causeway. That's right. So kind of like that. D yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Oh, well, those were good consequences, Paul. I can live with that. Right? Good Yay. job. That said, good somebody job. else can go first, so. <laughs> I'll go. Ferris is going to hang back here now. Wiping the sweat from his brow. Sweet. Wrong one. That was a good job, Mermex. Just bold Mermex make it across in good order. Uh, yeah, no Mermex. issues at all. Angelia will follow. I'm coming. Boop. All right. All right. So while I'm out on this platform, I just want to do a once over to make sure we're not bypassing any useful loot or items, mm -hmm. equipment. Very astute. Is there anything out here? There's not anything out here other than the, okay. the solids that I described to you. Fair enough. And they're big. You said they're like person size. So they're it's big, not like we yeah. can call them along with us or anything. Right. Can we roll them? So I'm going to go. I'm going to keep moving. They they look like they're like intrusions that have come up from the rock below. So like they're, they're not loose. They're not loose. No. OK. Do they have numbers on their faces? No. Wait for me, I'm coming. Excellent. Okay. Well, you have now approached that looming basalt castle. And you can see looking down on you, there's a lot of like grotesque statues. I mean, they're, they're just looking looking down on you sort of on the, statues where above you on the on the ramp on the walls yeah is there a gate here no gate there's a hmm. gateway there's a gateway oh, uh -huh. okay. yeah there's an entry but it's not in any way barred no okay Should we and there are grotesque in? statues like hanging on the walls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. looking at us just are looking at us are these magma serpents that we saw at the very beginning still still hanging out a ways away from us or they are still hanging out a ways away from you but now that you've moved to closer to this castle they are obviously watching you mm. got it they're interested in our presence yes should we knock well, there's nothing really to knock on. You can knock on the frame if you want. But it's just like basalt, you said. It's a basalt, like, arch. Exactly. So knocking on it probably doesn't even produce much of a sound. No, it hurts your knuckles, though. I'm going to step through. All right. Yeah, I'll follow along. OK, well, you are in the courtyard of this castle okay. and it's empty uh, the one thing that isn't empty about it is that throughout this courtyard ostensibly throughout the rest of the castle we'll see there's a <laughs> there are there's furniture but they're of odd size and they're all made of, of metal and uh, hung up inside of it are some like tapestries that are meant i guess to tell some kind of magma plane history of battles or 
grants This is in the courtyard? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, uh, furniture, you mean like like a bench? That yeah, sort of benches, thing? Yeah, benches, that sort of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like picnic table, whatever. Exactly. Okay. Got it. Are there any entrances the leading into you, out of the courtyard from, and into other parts of the castle? Yeah, from that court hard, uh, hard haha, courtyard, you there the you should be able to see it on the map there. There are four doorways. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that, okay, that I can see. Lead off from it, and those are actually doors made of iron. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. Closed. Closed. Okay. But we don't know if they're locked or trapped or anything like that. That's right. So at this point, is is everybody more or less in the courtyard? I think yes. so. More like I am. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, at this point, a voice booms out. Oh. Um, a voice booms out. Yes, a big disembodied voice that you're not really sure where it's originating from and it says leave my castle or you will burn burn doesn't seem to be an idle threat here mm -mm. no no you feel like you're burning as it is hot enough for you mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, I, I guess leaving would involve going through a door and leaving the courtyard. So how about the door right next to me right there on the southwest? Is it unlocked? Yes, it is unlocked. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll leave then. Uh, I think the, the rogue smartassery uh, is right on, and I will uh, follow the rogue. Okay. And these rooms are, this room is obviously considerably bigger than our figures would, would suggest, uh, because it is, uh, uh, the figures aren't to scale per se. The room is pretty big, yes. Your figures are too large for the map. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty sizable room, which is still furnished with the same iron, weirdly shaped iron, iron furnishings that the courtyard had in it uh this one this room uh, appropriate to uh it looks like a, a, a like a barracks got it hmm. okay um rather than scurrying off into a room since i don't see the source of this voice i'm mm -hmm. going to to say uh hello we mean no harm we're not sure how we got here we're actually trying to find our way out uh, we would be happy to leave if you could provide us with some assistance. Okay. All right. Well, the voice booms back. I mean you harm. Okay. Oh. That's going super. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I tell you what. Okay. Yeah. Why what? don't you Why don't you do a little a fifteen point physical uh, uh, challenge for me? A fifteen point physical challenge. What yeah, am I do doing? It. What am I being well, challenged with? You, I, 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 there is there is a a, a flaming rock uh, that has been tossed from above in one of oh, the towers. Oh no! Uh, that's coming coming down towards you. Can I can I push Lyco out of the way and use my physical? You can use your physical, Lyco. You can assist, uh, okay. giving giving uh, uh, Mermex plus one. So Mermex, you're going to be the the primary challenge taker here. Okay. Keep in okay, mind, so, if you fail, you both suffer the consequences. But but you you okay? So l l this is actually kind of cool. So. A man is the one that triggered the challenge That's by right. speaking to the voice, yeah. and then the challenge occurred, uh, and anybody else in the party who was able to jump in uh, could do that, and because Penny jumped in and has a better physical, this is going to be based on her physical, and Lyco is assisting. That's actually really smart, Penny. That's right. Yeah. Super smart. 
Uh, and, and in fact, Mermax, if you were to, for example, say something to the effect of, oh, hey, I've got a longsword and I could bat a flaming rock away like a, like a <laughs> baseball, then you get an additional plus one from your equipment. Oh, look, I've, I've got a longsword. I could bat the, the flaming rock away. <laughs> So you would get a total of plus two on top of your potent physical of four. So wow. it is it is a 15 point challenge, which means that it's one through 15. So what is your guess? Uh, With a six point uh, vari yeah, deviation in either direction. Point. Eight. You guess eight. Okay. So. It was a one. No. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Lyco, if you can figure out how to make your equipment relevant here, because you got you you can you would succeed anywhere from fourteen to two, and the number is a fifteen. I, I, should I assume that that uh, Angelia, my Angelia, and Paul's terrace? Are unable to help because we went into You're that room. In a room, you yeah. locked yourselves in a different room. With us, we didn't lock ourselves in. You're no, no we're, we're standing in a doorway, yelling over here, come over here. You ran away. We did You're not hide. You I don't made deny that. your sassy bed. Right now away. live in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, are we, are we I only assist? have. I have. No. I have two daggers. You There's sure nothing do. I can really do with two what daggers. What are you going to do with those two daggers? Of. Nothing. No, I'm no. I don't mm. know what I could possibly do with two daggers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just flail at it. You could use them to, to like. Oh, that's very fancy. Sure, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I'll give it to you, even no. though you don't even really you're seem not, you're not very committed to because... your your solution here. I'm I'm a sorcerer, so I feel like I would be, it would be much more in my immediate uh instinct rather than to try to do a fancy blocking maneuver to just go yeah <laughs> fine fine you fail then okay i fail what happens if i fail well the I two actually... of you are on fire and you burn that's what happens that's what happens you're gonna use the daggers to help deflect the boulder like our like the fire daggers to help deflect the fire. considered using the daggers to help but then decided <laughs> yelping instead was the better option so the two of you burn together of, as a of role player that i am is that if it makes more sense and it's funny that's what I'm gonna do. So while they're on fire, I get up my I get up my lighter and I say, Look, I'm Nero, I'm Nero. I'm Nero. Uh, so so I'm gonna rush out with my net, my trusty net, and start beating out the flames on them. Mm -hmm. Trying not to injure them more than they already are. And okay, why don't you attempt a, a fifteen a, 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 a fifteen point challenge there for me, Terrace? Let's see if Okay, you hold on, them. hold on. I wanna help. Uh because I uh, can assist Terrace in this. Uh, I have healing spells. So the way I'll help is I will attempt to uh, be using uh, healing magic on them uh, or, or creating water. Uh, as an Olympian priestess, I can probably cause it to rain. Uh, so that'll be the way I help. I try to help with spell casting. Uh, well, and which one I, of you is going to be the primary solver of this challenge? Uh, my mental is three. Uh, so... Um, why don't, why don't you lead it, and I'll I'll help with the nets. Okay. How do your uh, nets contribute it to it raining? The nets don't contribute to it raining, but I'm I'm helping to beat out the, put flame. out flames by the flames by beating them with net. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, and the nets the nets <laughs> rolled up like a cloth, <laughs> sure, right? Sure, it's, sure, it's, fine. Yeah, yes, I understand. And, and it's lightweight, <laughs> gentle because it's made of uh, lightweight material, so it's not really going to hurt them, and it's. You know, fortunately, I treat my nets with aloe uh, to preserve them. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. We're good. <coughs> Angelia, in in that I am in that I am uh, casting a spell. Yes. Uh, can I use my lyre as a uh, focus uh, for purposes of doing that? Fine. All right, fine. So I have three for my mental. Yes. Plus one. For my liar is four. Yes. Plus one for Terrace is five. Yes. Plus one for Terrace's net is six. Yes. All right. And it's a what challenge? 
It is a 15 point challenge. I'm going to guess a seven. You're going to guess a seven. Yes. And, and you're, you okay. Well, a couple of things happen. Oh, God. A <laughs> couple of things happen. Uh, they were seared, uh, but now they're being steamed. And Terrace, your net uh, is starting to smolder. Oh, no. it, 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 uh, it wasn't between, uh, I guess, the, uh, what did I say? A seven? Yeah. It wasn't between one and 13? Well, you guessed a seven, which means it would be between five minus seven, so two. Six. No, we had six. Yeah, yeah, we you had guessed, a six. Oh, you had six? We had a six. I take it all back. I'm sorry. I goofed. <laughs> The number, what was the it, number? I, I thought you had five for some reason. Uh, no, uh, you know, let me make sure that, that I'm at, uh, that I got it right. I have three for my mental, plus one for my liar is four, because I'm I'm using it as a spell focus to summon the rain. Terrace uh, is helping, and Terrace is helping with the with the net, so that makes that, six. That, that's the six. number is a one. So you, oh, good Lord. between the two of you, you managed to put out the flames, saving the physical. A stat of your friends from uh, being released Yay. by one. Oh. And this was all caused by a flaming rock somehow launched by this disembodied voice. Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe the disembodied voice did it. Maybe something else did it. That's the thing well, about disembodied voices. You're never sure. It could be a different body entirely. As the tail end of my assistance uh, and Terrace's assistance, can we drag them into the room we were in? Uh, so that uh, things cannot continue to be dropped on them. You don't need to drag me. I'm coming willingly. <laughs> All right. A flaming rock just fell out of the sky at me. You don't right. need to drag. As a free action, I look disapprovingly at uh, um, uh, Lyco, and then I put my leash away because he well, seems to be cooperating. And, and let's go that? to Never mind, let's go to that. this. Yeah, don't let's go to this question. room. Let's go to this room here if we can, because we've already looked at the other room. Okay. All right. Do you do any lasting damage? No lasting damage because your friends helped you. Thank you. Chris. Good friends you have. Yes. Although, if we continue to be steamed, uh, do, do, Myrmid do Myrmidons like do they uh, seem like lobsters? Or yes. Like, yeah, yeah, they're just like lobsters. And you would be oh. delicious. And you're lucky none of us has butter as a uh, piece of equipment. Yeah. Not funny. That's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> It's kind of funny. If y'all were all Myrmidons as well, you would know that Myrmex was emitting stressed pheromones right now. Uh, are the two of you uh, actually standing out? Uh, no. Oh, okay, no. We're going no, I'm coming. Room. I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. Now we're all in this room. What is this room like? Uh, this room appears to be a, a kind of office. Okay. Are there any interior doors or stairways, or are there any uh, uh, other ways to go further into the castle from these big rooms? Because uh, there's towers under, that loom up a hundred. There feet. are towers that loom up above, um, and they're not. If, if there are the two rooms in the two rooms that you've been in, they're not obvious yet. Okay, got it. So we'll do, let's search around the room. Sure, let's search around the room. Okay. Um, Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, everybody can participate in this mental challenge. Uh, and it's a 20 point mental challenge. So. Oh, that's our toughest challenge yet, it's isn't it? Toughest challenge yet. There's just, just this is a big room and there's a lot to search through. Um, okay. So, yeah, uh, 20 point mental challenge. And I, will I assume everybody's I will have participating. Quite a right? better chance. <laughs> Well, who has our best mental? Uh, I've got a three. Me. me. You've got a what for mental? Four. All right. Well, then I'll I'll assist uh, Lyco the sorcerer because uh, he is smarter than me. Uh, so I will assist Lyco. Not when uh, it's fighting things off, though. Can Can we all assist Lyco, or sure, do we can do... assist Lyco? Yeah, just tell me okay. how, what you what it is you're doing to assist Lyco. 
I'm picking things up and looking underneath them. Hey, you're strong. You you can be helpful for picking things up for sure. All right, that makes okay. sense. That's so smart. Mermex is anything that Lyco asks, Mermex will lift up so that Lyco can take a lift look underneath. Thing. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, Terrace will look for little secret compartments and just hidden places where you keep contraband. Because you're a rogue, and that makes sense. Okay. And uh, just as people um, listen to classical music while they're uh, attempting to uh, uh, study uh, study or work, uh, Angeli is going to play her lyre uh, to help put everyone at their ease a little bit because they've been set on fire recently and help them focus their mind. Uh, Lo-fi beats to search a room. Lo-fi beats to search a room, that's right. And, and as, she, <laughs> as she does, that's right. And as she plays that, she's going to follow along behind a Lyco, uh, making sage and helpful comments. Very good. Lyco, you get a total of plus four from your friends for a total oh, wow. mental stat of nine. Suddenly, we see how a 20 is accomplishable. Right. Yeah. Okay, so what's your guess? Uh, uh, 11. Wow. Ah, uh, 11, are you sure? Yes. Okay, well, it was a 17, so you're successful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so 20 points does become, if the if if the party is uh, willing to uh, come up with a good narrative uh, and figure out how to use their equipment and all cooperate, then then it really does become, uh, and, and have the person with the best stat be the lead, it really does become accomplishable, doesn't it? Yes. Uh-oh. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Our our little demo video is gonna have me sneezing in it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what do I find? What do you find indeed? You find I did this thing, right, that I lifted. Very helpful, Mermex. Thank you. See? I said that there were no obvious ways upstairs. Uh, oh. Secret door. Uh -huh. All right. Well, there's no books in here, right? Because they were burned. But uh, <laughs> everybody's favorite uh, uh, method of, of concealing a hidden door is a bookcase made of cat raw iron, right? With a wall sconce next to it that you tug on and it's classic happening. yeah can't go wrong exactly and it reveals a set of stairs heading up or down heading up oh good mm -hmm. up into some towers that's right all right well i think we should head up people yeah okay what's the order well, it sounded Sounds like Aunt Jelly wanted to go first, right? Are you going so first, Aunt Jelly? If you want the <laughs> musician priestess to go first when you have someone who's made out of chitin, who has natural armor and a long sword, then yes, certainly she will lead the way. I, uh, I, will, I will go first because because I'm less easy to hurt. I won't. I won't even go second at this point. <laughs> Uh, the heat's all getting to your party, and unit cohesion is starting to dissolve. <laughs> Further away from the magma is good. So uh, good uh, yeah, I'll go second. That's fine. Okay. All right, I'll follow along behind Terrace. All right. So I can keep irritatingly banging into him and stepping on the back of his heels. Oh, I guess that means I'm in the back. Okay. okay. Do you heal well, Lyco, or are you uh, trying to push for your way to the front? I'm busy, like, just sniffing random objects. Occasionally, I forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Staying with the party. That's what's happening. That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, keep, keep, so, keep the Sinosephalian away from those uh, Myrmidon pheromones. Yeah, that's right. Make your way up. He'll roll in them so, so that he's stinky. You make your way up the, the spiral basalt staircase and come out onto the ramparts that you saw from 
below. Oh, cool. Special points to the first person to tell me what they remember seeing up on the ramparts. Oh, that was the gargoyles? That's right, the gargoyles. Hanging off the wall. Yeah, hanging off the wall. Ugly ass statues. Yeah, ugly ass statues. Ugly ass statues. Gargoyles. Well, you saw the gargoyles from below, but uh, Mermex, it strikes you that this gargoyle you're, you're looking at also sees you. So it is It is more than just a statue. Uh, because it's not facing down anymore. Uh, it's oh, facing no. toward you. I'm... Uh, I'm... I'm going to make myself as big as I can and, and, and brandish my sword. Okay. All right. I'll allow it. Uh, why the hell not? Uh, why don't you attempt You don't want to mess with us. Physical. You don't want to mess with us. I'm trying to intimidate. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I, I'm running through my, my funny way out here. I'm running through my playlist for stirring battle music. Oh, boy. So do a, a 20 point uh, physical. A challenge for me there, Mermex. Uh, you can add one for your your longsword, of course. So that's a. Uh, I've got a range of five. Then you sure do. Uh, I uh, I'd like to assist uh, by playing stirring assist? battle music. You play uh... stirring battle music. Okay, Mermex, you get to add two. <laughs> you feel inspired, and I'm sure the, the gargoyles also getting the vibe. So uh, I, I'm separating out while all this is happening, so I'm okay. not clustered up. Smart, smart. Okay, Mermex, you would you try to uh, intimidate the gargoyle? Nine. You guess nine. Yep. And you have a plus or minus six, huh? Well, the number Seven. was fourteen, so you succeed at intimidating this gargoyle, and the gargoyle says, "You know what, man? It's not worth it." <laughs> <laughs> And takes an awkward little dive off of the ramparts into the magma. Oh no! Did the gargoyle just flung himself into the magma? Sure. He lived there. Maybe he likes oh, it. Oh, it, does, it doesn't. It doesn't. He's, he's not killing himself. He oh. can just go okay. into the magma because he's a, a, a probably a native. He's a local. He's a basalt he's a gargoyle. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's a local. All right, so let's take a quick look around. What was but it? Nice, like? nice job, Mermex. Get it, getting rid of a, a gargoyle. I mean, that's better than I us see. fighting the damn thing. And, and when he comes out of the magma later to attack us, he'll be glowing red hot and you know incinerate everything that comes I, within ten I feet. I suggest we really figure out how to get the hell out of here before that happens. So it that's a good idea. Happen. Magma gargoyle. Because we're turning into pieces of beef jerky here, as it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it's it, faint it, hissing uh, sounds coming from the, uh, Mermex's joints. Have y'all yeah. all been in a sauna? I assume you've all been in saunas before, right? We're not talking steam room. We're talking just sauna. Dry. dry. Really it's hot. It's a dry heat, man. It's a dry heat. And it's, it's sweating you. Yeah. All right, so what were you saying, hot. Mermex? What is it you want to do up here? Let's look around. What's, what was it guarding? Well, it was guarding the rampart, uh, but now that the rampart is, at least this part of the rampart, is unguarded by this specific gargoyle, you see that the rampart does lead uh, off to a, a, a doorway that goes into a tower. Excuse me. Well, let's go see what's in the tower. So you can get into a tower from here. Yep. Yeah. I, 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 I follow along. I'm down with this plan. I follow Mermex's lead. Okay. Yep. Cool. Coming along. All right. Well, you open the the tower and uh, tower door. You don't open the whole tower. It's you get what I'm saying. Anyway, you open the yeah, tower door and there's another set of stairs past that door. Uh, it's a sort of it's uh, the word I'm looking for. Skinny tower, like minaret. Kind yeah. Of okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We follow it on up. Cool. All right. Nothing eventful happens other than doing stairs in this heat is probably not at the top of your, like, favorite things to be doing. Um, and then you finally get to the top, and you are at a room that is bisected by an iron uh, cage, effectively. 
sort of like a cage wall, big old cage door, iron, and beyond it, so you're on the side with nothing, and beyond it is lots of stuff. Oh. Shiny, glittery, treasury st type stuff. Oh. Yeah. Well, we all like that. Yeah. Okay. That was nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Anything that will help us get out of here? That's a good question, Penny. Maybe. Look, so, uh, Terris, uh, who remember seeing in a very popular Athenian pirate play this trick where you could lift the door up in a certain way and it just came off the hinges because it was blacksmith that way, tries to do that. <laughs> why not? Why not? Why not? Why, why not? Uh, you're attempting a 20 point mental uh, challenge. A 20 sure. point mental challenge, not a physical challenge? Uh, you, you know what? The way you described it, it sounds kind of physical. Do it physical. Physical is fine. Okay. So that's a three. Yeah, when I see what he's trying to do, I'll, I'll help. Okay. So Mermex lends four. a hand there. Uh, or actually, Mermex should probably take. Terrace's instruction, and oh, there you go. The primary one to lift it. Mermex is yes. stronger than Terrace. Yeah. That's yes, right. put your shoulder into it right here. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Okay. All right. So uh, I've got a range of five. You do now. Uh, I'll go put my shoulder into it too. Range of six. six. Range of okay. six. Uh, all right. Uh, I glance over disapprovingly at Lyco uh, and say, uh, "You could help too if you'd like, dog." Eleven. I'm going with an eleven. You're good at this game, Penny. Uh, yeah. The number was sixteen. So your your uh, stat of six here uh, would take you all the way up to seventeen. So you succeed. Yeah, uh, blacksmiths. I guess real sloppy bunch because the pins that held hold the gate in. If you're strong enough, uh, they're not uh, hammered on the bottom to prevent them from being lifted out the opposite direction. So I'm just going to kick out a thing, it's a strong character. Yeah, well, you lift that gate right up out of the the, the, the cage, and uh, now you have free access to the rest of this room and all this treasure. All right, our strongest link took out the weakest link, so someone else can uh, go look through this treasure and see if there's something that can uh, help us get home. Mm -hmm. We have to make a search, uh, Brenda? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, no, you don't. Oh. No. Um, we we skipped the, the search in favor of just breaking into the room because it's yeah, you know. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. And 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 we and technically we had to do some searches just to even get to this point. Exactly. So so there was a search mechanic yeah, yeah, yeah. in there already. Um. So a, a lot of this treasure is just crap. Uh, stuff that is probably valuable for some reason to the alien peoples that inhabit the plain of magma. However, several large fire opals are valuable to anybody. And mm. so you can find a little pouch containing six of those. And then of nice. note, uh, an interesting in there is a little brass box which oh. has a uh, half dozen of those of iron discs in it um, that look really similar or at least be, to be the same size as the discs that were in the uh, summoning circle before that you couldn't really figure out hmm. oh were the brass discs in the summoning circle uh, were they removable we never tried, I, I guess. We never, that. yeah, we, we never try. tried. Maybe. We should definitely take these with us. These could Absolutely. be the uh, the negatives for castings. Who knows? Maybe these are just what they were made from. Maybe they don't get removed. Or maybe they do. It just seems like too much of a coincidence. It does. But you're right, Amanda. We'll definitely take these with us. Taking them with us. And the fire opens. And the fire opens. And are those the only things that seem to be of any note? The iron discs in the in the box. 
Uh, those are the two main things of note. Yeah. And is there is there anything um, about the box uh, that's significant? Yes. I mean, I'm not trying to abscond with the treasure. I'm just taking a look at it. Yeah, inside the box, on the underside of the lid, something mm -hmm. is written there in a language that's not obvious. Or, hmm. like, it's not Greek. It's, it's, it, it's not all Greek to me. Not, not all, all Greek, Greek to, to us at this, yeah. at this point. Um, can any of us read it? I, I sort of pass it around. You can attempt it, attempt to read it with a 15 point mental challenge. Oh, I would love to attempt to read it. Okay, do it. Uh, can, can I assist, like, by helping sound out uh, phonetics or looking for symbols that could be, you know, like cognate root words or something? I mean, I've got a good mental, too, so I'd like to assist Lyco sure. if I can. Lyco, you get a plus one. Eight. Cool, the number was ten. You succeed. Yes, it is a ritual uh, that describes arranging the iron disks within that summoning circle oh. uh and it basically sends things rather than summoning things it's a summoning <gasps> circle this oh. is our ticket out of this very warm and uncomfortable place yeah. where giant flaming rocks fall and get us the back sky. onto our vacation or trip or whatever the hell we were supposed That's to be doing right. whatever we were doing before whatever we, ended up we were here. doing which was better than this so we're going back then right that's the idea. That's the idea. But we have to get I mean, back to the summoning circle and not get giant rocks falling from the sky on us. No, we're not going to make this our lair, Penny, if that's what you were thinking. No, no, no. We're not going to insist on, on uh, searching the rest of the place. Uh, let's just run back to the summoning circle before any more molten things. Uh, I, I mean, we could search the rest of the place, but my, my sense is that uh, the point of the drill is us for us to get the hell out of here uh i think, <laughs> I, I think if we're if we linger i can uh, uh we were told we were not welcome here we're told yeah. we weren't welcome here and uh from scene one it's been impressed upon us that this is a hostile and dangerous environment yeah but but i've been playing terrorists almost 90 minutes i mean i'm vested in this character i want to loot Make sure I get everything I could possibly get out of each of these rooms. But, it, but you know, you, you probably convinced me just to go to the pentagram. If I were that noble, here, so. I would have flown away to get my friends to come back to teach us a lesson. Right? Right? There you go. And then turn it into a fortress. Yeah. <laughs> come back with, with, with an AC unit and, uh, and, and no, rule I mean, the, gar here. the gargoyle will have gone to get its friends to teach us a lesson. Yeah, probably. probably. I just feel like time is against, is, is against yeah. us at this point so in all sorts of ways. We're going down the stairs then. Yes. And back out and down the causeway. So. Keeping so, an eye out for the serpents, magma creatures. Well, and keeping an eye out for other uh, gargoyles as we head out of this castle. And keeping an eye out for whatever dropped a flaming rock on our friends. Uh -oh. oh, question. That disembodied booming voice, could that have been from the gargoyle? I didn't get the sense that it, that, that was really... Uh, the disembodied uh, voice didn't sound like the gargoyle that you talked, but maybe gargoyles will sell, sound different. Sure, there could be a lot of range, vocal yeah. range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been a bigger gargoyle. Yeah. Uh, actually, somebody's been sending people here for years because of all like, like all the bones, all the charred bones. We're not the first ones who have been sent here who didn't belong here. Uh, well, maybe we'll be the first ones who get the hell out. Yeah, it's looking well, like we're not going to get to just uh, at home. Is Angelia hanging out? Uh, is she gonna, no, I'm like... not hanging out. I'm, I'm trying to get you all to leave. Well, then what's we're all what are you doing in the tower? Let's go. Oh. We're leaving the tower. Yeah, yeah I thought you were going to, like, you're looking to, like, lease some office space there. Yeah. Nope, we're Come leaving on. the tower. Oh, no, no. Heading back I down. just forgot about my character. Let me move her here. There we go. We're moving right. up the way. So it looks like the uh, that uh, rotating island is, is occupied. It is occupied. Very astute oh, no. observation oh, of yours. Oh, no. Okay. What's it occupied by? It is occupied by something. 
uh, I, bigger than uh, the gargoyle that you first encountered. He looks like he's also made of basalt and is kind of on fire and he has no shirt and he doesn't look friendly. Yeah, he is four foot tall. He's got wings and he's also made of basalt but he's also sort of laced with magma. Okay. Got it. And he says, um, leave the plates or die. And he brandishes very, very spicy looking rocks. All right, I don't want spicy rocks. (laughs) I'm going to say very reasonably, we are trying to leave, but you're in the way. No, you can't leave with my discs. Leave the discs or die. We will leave the discs behind when we go. Is there an option where we get to live? Uh, No. No, I don't. Okay then. (laughs) Actually, someone besides me should try and sweet talk this guy. (laughs) Okay, well, it doesn't matter for the time being because we're throwing rocks at the party. I don't think he's going to be sweet talk. We're throwing two rocks. Have we just been flung into combat? Yeah, we're in combat. Seems that way. We're flinging people into combat like we throw these rocks. I'm going to use my long sword to try and bat them back at him. I'm going to uh, use some sort of a a, a blessing, uh, cast a blessing upon the party uh, to bolster them physically and uh, uh, mentally, and I'm going to play my lyre to accentuate the effects that I'm trying to uh, uh, impose upon them. Okay. I don't, I, I, I don't think that this this guy is going to be vulnerable to any sort of uh, fire magic, so I want to, like, throw an ice bolt at him. So great. smart. So great. Okay. And I'm going to dodge, tuck, and roll out of the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As I slowly, acrobatically, cinematically make my way forward uh, into net range. Okay. Oh, and 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 if I if I could be meta shitty just for a second here, I uh, probably Lyco, not be able to stop you. Well, Lego, if you wanted to use your equipment and get us an additional plus one, you could say uh, I cast an ice spell upon my dagger uh, and throw the frozen dagger at uh, the creature. <sighs> Cause that no, I'm just saying that. No, I get what you're be... saying, but I don't know. Would that work that way? Because I'm not. I have a terrible physical, and I'm throwing. The throwing. The way is the it works in the there, game yeah. is if you assist yeah. with plus one, and if you can use your. Yeah, yeah but this isn't an assist. Lyco's not actually assisting it. here. Uh, we've no. got a couple of problems that we're solving. We've got rocks being thrown at the party, which uh, Mermex is addressing with sword. Uh, you're assisting with your spell and. Uh, and and liar, uh, but everybody else isn't really assisting in that. Uh, that's that's not what's going on. Uh, Got it. Lyco is making an attack on this guy, which is good, and uh, Terrace is also sort of getting into net range in order to do his thing, which is also good. So first, let's resolve these rocks here. It's a it's a twenty point physical challenge, Mermex, which you are getting a plus two on from uh angelia okay so you have a six for your physical and what do you guess uh hang on i've got uh but i've also got my sword that i'm using so that gives me a range of seven. Oh, you're totally Mer- right yeah mermex is using the sword like a bat yeah yeah like a bat. weird I, I keep looking for my dice okay uh, no, no hang on <laughs> all right range of seven 20 points uh let's try a 10. You critically succeed. Not only, not only do you bat the rock away to the surprise of Mermex, you bat the rock right back at him. Oh, nice, nice. Mermex. And it smacks him in the face, knocking him somewhat off balance. And I will say that the other challenges, which were going to be 20-point challenges, are 15-point challenges instead, because they're a little bit easier. Okay, so Lyco, you're casting a nice spell. Okay, it's not a 15-point challenge rather than a 20-point challenge. And you have a mental of four, so what do you guess? 
I'm going to guess... Nine. Okay, well, it's not nine, but it is 12, which means that you do succeed. So your ice bolt uh, cools down the magma in his body, causing him to, to crack, and, and, uh, and, and he's very upset and angry about this, but he's also hurt. Okay, nice. good job. And finally, uh, Terrace, you get yeah. up to him with your net. Right. Yes. So I'm going to throw my net on him and try to tangle him so he can't get up and do anything while we do something next time. Okay, I think that's great. Uh, okay. You get you have a four because of your net and your physical, and so it is again a fifteen point challenge. What do you guess? Uh, I'll guess a nine. Okay, well it was a five, so you succeed. Uh, with with the, the nine because of your four there. And so you successfully entangle him with your net. So between the barrage of, of ice magic, uh, getting smacked with his own magma stone, and now being entangled in the net, uh, he is uh, su sufficiently kind of disabled. Uh, for the for the time being, so your party is going to be free to pass by him. That went about as well as it could have. I would say so. Nice. That was really good. Yeah. Nice job, everyone. This is an awesome system. I actually really like it. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so simple, but it's really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it really gives the characters more the characters slash players. Uh, more of an opportunity to move the narrative along than than uh, is the case. Uh, if it was more mechanically heavy, we would just be rolling and seeing what happened. Here, we kind of have to make a case for yeah. uh, what we're attempting to do. More cinematic. It's definitely more narratively driven. It's not something that you... Mm. Unlike a game with more rules, like say Swords of Infinity or, or Skirmish, where there's like synergies that come from the rules itself, and so there's like kind of a strategy and and, and like combo kind of element to things, and there's a tactical element to it. This is right. missing that. But for like fast, fun narrative that like kind of has like a fantasy novel kind of vibe, it you can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh. Yeah. All right, so so this guy is letting us pass at this point. Well, he's not letting you. You're forcing. Him. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, he's not going to be able to stop us. No. So scurry, he scurry, can't. scurry. Not at this point. He's yeah. got your ice crystals uh, uh, melting on him, yeah. uh, and uh, a net uh, all wrapped around his ass, and a boulder uh, broken around his head. So no, he's not letting us do anything. And, and I'll happily sacrifice the net to keep him out of commission while you can I get a new stays. net. Right. Oh, you've got exactly. a fire rope. Well, you can get like a thousand nets. So many nets. There's the gargoyles. I said he was going to get his friends. Ah! Ah! Those are fire serpents. Um, oh no! Why are the they worms. here? I'll tell you why they're here. And it's not why are because they, why are they here? it's not because the adventure calls for it. They're here because I'm the artist and I had art for them, and so they're going to get included. So that's why they're here. <laughs> I do like the fire no, it, it, it does look nice. That is the definition of meta shitty. It technically is the definition. It is literally the definition of meta shitty <laughs> in that they're here for a meta reason, and it's shitty for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are in the circle. You have your little brass box with tokens in it. You have instructions for the uh, the for the ritual. Okay, this is going okay. to take some some doing. Okay, uh, you have to actually set this up correctly. Okay. In the meantime, as people are going to be attempting to set up the discs. There's going to be these oh, no. fire serpents slithering up out of the lava because y'all, they decided look tasty. And so they're going to be trying to make their way up onto the platform as you try to not summon, but instead send yourself somewhere else. The so. idea of something slithering out of lava just creeps me out so much. <laughs> that is so creepy. So the characters have a choice between contending with the serpents 
uh, and and trying to do the ritual, or do we do one and then the other? How no, does this work? you don't get to do one then the other. They're not giving you that kind of space. I will I will work on the on the on the circle. Okay, then I will assist uh, because um, I'm going to be the least combat oriented. Uh, I, I don't have good physical skills per se. Okay. I'm going to assist Lyco uh, in, um, in in doing this. And I'm going to do my best to sort of like, keep the uh, the fire serpents away from the people getting setting up the circle to get us out of here. Okay. And I'll help out, and I will help out the Marmadon. All right, sounds good. Two okay. separate challenges, then. Two separate mm -hmm. challenges. Okay, great. Let's resolve the serpents first, because if you don't deal with the serpents first, the serpents are going to be all up in your business, and that's going to make the right. summoning circle harder. So, Myrmidon and Thief, you are attempting a 20-point physical challenge here. So you're taking the lead on this, uh, I assume, Mermax? Yep. Okay. So. And uh, uh, so I've got a range of five with my sword. Okay, uh, so you're using your sword for this. Getting, I'm getting an assist from... Uh, uh, Terrace, so Terrace. six. Right. All right. What are you, how are you assisting there, Terrace? Uh, I'm going to use these bones, and I'm going to start throwing bones at anything that starts coming up over the lip of the uh, smart the circle. Yeah, that's excellent. Okay, so six then, Mermax. Yeah, so that I'm I'm running running around trying to chop at them. Uh huh. Great. Uh, bootstrappy crap. Were you about to say, Angelia? How do you know I'm about to say something bootstrappy? It's on your face. <laughs> well. Terrace is entitled to a piece of equipment, yes. and he left his net behind to keep the. I knew you were the, going um, to ask if the uh, bones count. I, do the bones count as equipment? I knew you were going to ask. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Fine. The bones count as equipment. <laughs> I'm just an advocate for the party. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, fine. Yeah, bones count as equipment. Mermex, you have a seven. Uh, 11. Okay, it was a 9. You succeed at fending off the fire serpents with the assistance of Terrace's hurled bone equipment. It's a femur in each hand. Put it on your sheet, Terrace. <laughs> Throw it on your character sheet, Terrace. <laughs> I will. Actually, how could they not be equipment? We literally have long bone of an ancestor as one of the pieces of equipment that Lyco could have. So it's true. it's true. I would. There's a precedent for bones. There's a precedent for bones being equipment. They'll be so, back. We can hurry. Speaking of Lyco, Lyco, yes. it's, it's your turn. Uh, this is a 20 point mental challenge. And uh, yeah. You you have a, a an explanation saying that your your uh, discs are going to need to replace the brass discs that are in there. So you have iron discs, and you're going to, have, to replace the brass discs. I have iron discs. Yeah, and they have to be put in the correct place, and all this other stuff. And you're sort of deciphering a language that you don't really speak, and you could goof. It's true. If Is you Angelia... mess up, you might blow up. Oh, fun! Is Angelia helping me? <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Angelia said help she was helping, right? Angelia. Oh yeah, Angelia's right? helping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So wait, what's our bonuses here? You have a what? Four for mental. Four for mental. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, do the discs count as equipment for uh, um, uh, like a? No. Does the actual instruction manual written on the inside of the lid okay. count as equipment for like a? Yes. Okay, that's that's something. What are yeah. can I use my lyre? Uh, because uh, music is often uh, used as a device for transporting people through the planes. Fine. So I get she gets plus two from or Lyco gets plus two from me, and Jelly is assisting and playing the lyre, uh, and uh, it's based on uh, Lyco's four intelligence or mental plus uh, the. Um, uh, instruction manual that you generously gave us. 
Right, and if Lyco uses his daggers to pry up the uh, brass discs, um, then then that's another bonus as well. Sure, I will use. Tell us you can visualize that. I will use my daggers to pry up <laughs> the bronze discs. So what is that? Plus seven total. Plus I think it's eight total. It's eight total now. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, we've never had a plus eight in this game. That's, that's a, a really lot. Big one. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. All right. I'm still. And what is the range of this challenge? Scared. It's a twenty point 20 spread, point so spread. I could still, I could still miss it. Okay. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Final answer. Eleven. It was an eight. So. Oh, thank goodness. You okay. succeed. <laughs> you don't send the party to the elemental plane of void uh like i was oh. gonna send you if you failed where you would have exploded because you have positive pressure in a it's true no we'd have flowed place yes well that would have sucked that would have sucked um so you send the party back to the the place that they came from which was their nice little beachside vacation yay now we have fire opals. And now you have fire opals. And we have fire opals. And, have fire opals. Booze and other fun things. That you can you actually go to, to the good hotel on the little island that we're on, <laughs> yeah. rather than the shitty hotel that we've been staying in. That's right. Exactly. And we can tip. And you can tip. I roll so yours. we disappear from the plane of magma, yes. and we reappear on a, a beautiful little Aegean island somewhere. Yeah. All Yay. singed and smoky smelling and <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> From our excursion, From we took excursion. that excursion. Yeah. Never taken that excursion again. No, don't do that one. <laughs> awesome. Good job, guys. Well, good job, Brenda. Thank Thanks. you. That was terrific. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was fun. I could, I could see doing this on like a long car ride with the kids. Yeah, yes. yeah totally. And that's what it's for. So, so just so everybody knows uh, who's watching, right? The people here are all aware. Um, did uh, Penny? Did you have the uh, rules? Fold it up. I do. Yeah, so the rules are, are designed so that you can print them out on a letter-sized piece of paper, and they fold up and uh, turn into this little three-page booklet, three-page plus cover surface, so four, four total pages. Um, and that's all of the rules that we used here, so you can see that they actually work uh, quite effectively. Uh, this adventure obviously is available in PDF, which you can pull up on a uh, cell phone or a tablet. And in fact, you can look forward to a mobile optimized version of this PDF that will read effectively on a cell phone so that you can use it there. Uh, we also intend to do fun things like release them on uh, Kindle so that uh, you can get them through the uh, Kindle store. And finally, and, and the thing that I'm most excited for, uh, is we will be releasing them as like six and change inch pocket books so that uh, you can, you know, pack them in a little suitcase or throw them in a backpack or whatever. So you can bring them along on your road trips and play them with your kids or play them with the other folks that you're around or maybe you're on the train or maybe you're on the plane or whatever. But that's what this game is for. And as you can see, you can get through a fun, lively little scenario like this in, how long did we play this for? An hour. An hour and a half, it looks like. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good play Perfect. time, really. Yeah. And we did a lot. I mean, there were several scenes throughout this. We had a puzzle. Uh, we kind of had, we had some searching. Uh, we actually had to figure some things out that weren't based on roles, uh, or not roles, but challenges. Right. Uh, they were actual challenges that we had to do. Yeah, human um, challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I think all that went really well, Brenda. You did a really good job on that. It's a great system, so congratulations on that, too. Thanks. Well, I'm glad you all had fun. Uh, hopefully you, uh, the folks who, who watched this video, uh, enjoyed that as well. And it's the tipping point that you needed uh, to pick up either a copy of the rules themselves or this adventure or a different TSRPG adventure. Uh, so yeah, thanks for Because we have more in. of the works. Yeah, we sure do. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.